Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Lessons Learned by Lisa. And today, 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 I have a good girlfriend that all is about relationships that's about to bless you with some nuggets today. So help me, help me, help me, help me welcome Queenie, the woman that represents relationships and love. How you doing today, my sister? I can't hear you, Queenie. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Now I can't. Now I can't. Okay, okay. Okay, Hi, so. Friend. How are you, honey? I am well. I am well. So it has been a minute with COVID and all this. And I was yes. reflecting when I thought about our interview. And I was like, oh, my God. I remember when I was on that treadmill <laughs> trying to um, get my little run on back in the day. And then you came up to me and you was like, are you a runner? And I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> And then you was like, because we've got this running group that we're starting and we want to yeah. know if you want to be a part. And they kept yes. on calling me ma'am, ma'am. Yes. And I was like, Jesus, Lord, am I really that old? But then when I looked at it and I realized they were that young, I was like, okay, they just being respectful. They not yes. trying to say I'm old. I said, and so um, I thought about that. And we had a wonderful group of sisters from all yes. over the world. Yes. Ebony Paces, Ebony, Ebony Paces for life, for life, for life, for life, for life. <laughs> And so yes. since then, I have watched you evolve into this woman that we see in front of us now. I've seen you overcome some struggles. I've seen you um, help those that are in need. I've seen you add a glimpse of hope to those who felt that they were hopeless. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and, you know, what you're doing right now? Oh, goodness, Lisa. Well, thank you. I hope you can, I hope you can hear me and everyone else can hear me. Thank you so much for inviting me to sit down and have a chat with you. Um, you are truly my sister friend. And uh, you are right. <laughs> You're right. You're on that treadmill running your butt off. And when I ask if you are running, you like hesitate. And I'm thinking, girlfriend, you are a runner. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's been quite a journey. Um, life is what it is, you know, uh, and it's been quite, quite a journey. I am making it through this pandemic, like many of us, um, trying to continue to evolve and continue to have these introspective, reflective looks at myself and life and, you know, the importance of friendship and connections and, you know, just trying to get through it every single day and still stay true to who I am and who God has created me to be. You know what I mean? So, um, that's what I've been doing, girl. Uh, well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to dive in a little bit and redirect the question because everybody knows you as the bar talks chick. Because that's what you used to that. be. Yeah, yes. that's how you used to be. And I remember being a panelist at one of your um, sessions. But I want to yes. know what triggered the move to change from bar talks to relationship zone? So the pivot came when I was, kind of like just again last year looking at my well this was like in 2019 actually and I kept saying you know does bar talks is that brand really who I am um and although bar talk served this purpose I believe the season was what it was and it was wonderful um and it opened up some other doors and connected me to some other people I had to like I said take those introspective kind of looks and glimpses at myself and say well what is most important to me what is that the common like um pattern or conversation that continues to come up and it was about relationships at the end of every connection discussion if I really just kind of evaluated what that topic was about no matter what it was even if it was about politics or about love it still was all the found foundationally um like premised on relationships relationship building so I said you know what I'm just going to change the brand and I'm going to be true to what really matters most to me and that is building and discovering and you know creating strong relationships and really talking about love and how we cultivate that and reflecting on life and what life has taught us and then all things relationships whether it's with our jobs or with the people that are in our community or the people in our homes trying to figure out how we can better show up in those relationships. Okay That's so like you touched on a key word right there for me you mm -hmm. said healthy love yeah so looking at you mm -hmm. and knowing you as a person 
someone may not know you. Someone may, may not even know how to recognize what healthy love is. So could you kind of give me like a brief description of what healthy love means to you? It may not necessarily mean that to everybody else, but as you were doing this transformation and you started looking at yourself, you realized that there were some key components that kind of triggered you towards this place. What is that that triggered you? Um, you know, I think it was just this, I, I know what unhealthy felt like. <laughs> Well, that's a good place to start. Yeah, that's a good place to start, girl. It's like, okay, wait, this this don't feel quite right. Um, and then I also knew what unhealthy looked like coming from me, right? Oh. And I wanted to to be better. And I, I really wanted to drill down and because it's not just me, I'm not by myself, even though sometimes in the middle of drama, you feel like you're by yourself. I wasn't by myself. And so when I would talk to people, you know whether it was on Facebook, whether it was in you know real time, I saw a trend of unhealthy practices and behaviors. And so I wanted to kind of start talking more openly about that, being more transparent about it. Um, I can be honest when I haven't showed up properly in a relationship. And so, so what are some of those unhealthy characteristics? Yeah, so, so I think some of the unhealthy characteristics is when you got to lie about your intent, right? <laughs> you got to lie about your, maybe even your whereabouts. You got to lie or decide to, not speak or suppress what you truly desire from that partner, from that daughter, son, lover, you know, or even your job. Imagine going to your job, knowing you have an expectation of what you require as far as the um, salary, but you choose to say nothing. And then when they, when they underpay you, you're angry, frustrated, and you decide not to show up properly on that job. Well, who's, who's responsible for that? You could have just said in the beginning, what your desired salary was. And you can negotiate that in the, in the beginning. So I think that's what unhealthy was looking like to me, just not showing up in my truth, you know? And not that, showing that, up for you, not knowing, yeah. not representing the value that you are and that you exactly. bring to the table. Yeah, and then I'm like, who am I upset with? I'm frustrated with everyone around me, except it started here. I needed to be honest with myself and be able to present that. Um, and, and so that's kind of why I decided to pivot um, I want to talk about love and life and, and relationships and, you know, learning what, you know, learning from each other. Yeah. So, so here we go. I, I started the relationship zone. And that's a good thing. Cause I think that a lot of times we put conditions and limitations on what love represents. Yeah. And I learned a valuable lesson I can say from my sons. It's like, you feel like because someone loves you that you have to be included in every facet of their life. And that right. does not necessarily mean that that's love. And I remember when they were engaging in di different activities that did not include me, mm -hmm. I could feel myself being resentful. Like after all the things I've done and yeah. you're not gonna invite me or I can't show up for that. And I had a conversation with them and basically they opened up my eyes to a new awareness. It's like, mom, it doesn't mean that I don't love you. It's just that this part of my life doesn't need a mother. Yeah, ooh, yes, yes. And I had to be okay with that. Yes. I had to be willing to be that spectator from the outside that I may not be able to directly touch them, but I could still pray for them. My, my communication was still open yes. if they needed advice, but that yes. was a hard pill to sm swallow as a mother yes. because you don't want to be excluded from of the people that you love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I totally agree. I 100% agree. And I think I have dealt with that with my oldest son as well is, it's, it's feeling, feeling I, I say rejected, right, from certain areas of his life. But at the same time, what it has forced me to do and to be honest and speak more about is how do I receive love and how do I give love? So the reason why I feel that way is because, you know, as I talk about love languages in, in other conversations, my love language is quality time, right? So that's like my number one. So if I see that I can't spend quality time with my son because he's busy living his life then I feel you know I feel like there's this this missing piece this missing link I'm, so for me I get what you're saying but again it really was about discovering like well what what do I need to feel love and it's not always about the other person it's not always it's not even their intent to leave you out or leave you feeling a particular way but you got you got to know who you are you got to know what you need and then you got to really know why you're feeling that way. And, and is it intentional? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, communication. Intentional. 
<laughs> communication is key and Thank you've got to be able to be able to be open with the people that you profess to love yes. and that you want to see better in life. And mm -hmm. I think that's a challenge because as women, we wear so many roles every day and sometimes it's hard to decipher mm -hmm. which ones we need to lay down. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes to the point where we're learning how to self-care, which yeah. we've never done before because it was made to feel as if you were selfish if you took care of yourself. Absolutely. And so there goes that mind shift that had to come into play. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I am valuable. Yeah. I can't do that for me without feeling guilt. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, yes. you know, I remember the days when you were married and you went to the store and you bought stuff and you didn't want your husband to see. So you left it in the back of the trunk until you went yeah. to sleep or to work and you brought it back in or you would put on something and act like you had it all your life when yes. you really didn't because you couldn't be honest with your truth. Yes. And at the yes. end of the day, I don't think the people you were trying to deceive even cared. I don't think they did either. <laughs> so it yeah. says more about your your perception of self yeah, rather yeah. than other people's. And I think that it's a good thing that um, the woman I'm seeing now in you has evolved to a place where you can be honest about sure. the places where you felt weak. Because yeah. most of us are afraid to be vulnerable because we assume that people will try to use that against us. So it takes a lot of courage to sit and say, hey, I'm jacked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so tell me some of the too. tools that you use, you know, to get yourself to this brighter, this light that can be seen yeah. miles and miles. It's very you visible know, to I mean, the world now. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's a process of evolution, right? Um, for me, I've always known, I've always felt it, but I haven't always been able to live it. And much of it is because of what you're saying, because you're afraid of the person in front of you, either in our minds having an issue, but I do not want to pretend that some people in front of us will not have an issue. That's just a fact. Some people in front of you will have an issue. And that may be the reason why you choose to suppress who you really are. But at the end of the day, if they really have an issue, then they're not meant to go along your, your journey anyway. So we also have to be willing to sever ties when we see those types of um, relationships kind of starting or, or we find out that we're in those types of relationships with people that are wanting to stunt our growth because of their small um, view or perspective or perception of what we are supposed to be in their life. So we have to be mindful of that as well. And so for me, I think some of my tools was just, again, looking at self and then choosing to cut ties with unhealthy behaviors and relationships. I realize that sometimes a relationship can be a bad behavior, honey. <laughs> um, I, I, let me tell you like, no, you are a bad habit. So, <laughs> so, so I need to dismiss you for 21 days so I can listen, pick up a new habit to replace you. Just, you. <laughs> look, you just got to do that. I mean, and it's, and it's, it's nothing personal, but it's all personal. Um, you had mentioned something earlier when we were talking about the selfishness that you feel. I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago. I remember telling myself, it's not that I'm being selfish, but it's self-preservation. And, and it was still difficult for another 10 years to live that truth because I still felt that nagging sense of you're being selfish. Because as a mom, I put my children first. When I was a wife, I put my husband first. I put the family um, values and the goals first. And it didn't matter if it went against what I truly desired and wanted. I tried to look at the bigger picture. But then when that all ends and the kids grow up, you're left undone. We do. <laughs> you're left with you. Oh, and then you have to figure out who yes, you is. <laughs> you are left half-baked. <laughs> and then you start going. What do you do? Start going, trying to find the other ingredients to fulfill the full recipe in other people. And it's not necessarily, you're not going to find it that way. Because it really lies in you, but you got to do that self-discovery. And so for me, it, it, I mean, I am such an, in, an inner work person. I'm, I'm such an inner work person that that's always the first place I start. I, when I find myself blaming everyone else for whatever's going on, I normally find, go to a quiet place. And then I look at self. How did I, how did I even, how did I let this happen to me? Again, it's not always my, my fault, right? Or the individual's fault, but we do have a part to play. And I think yeah. once we drill down to that, then we can start doing that outer work. But that inner work came first, girl. 
Ain't that the truth? And that resonates back to what you said in the beginning with the job and when you accepted a salary that you didn't really want and then you don't Mm -hmm. show up. It's the same in relationship. You accept a relationship with whoever, whomever, and Mm -hmm. when they don't show up based on your expectation, you're not strong enough to have that conversation to say, that's not good enough for me. I want more. And a lot of us don't have the patience to wait for the more Mm. because we're afraid of being alone yeah. And lonely. Yeah. And alone doesn't mean that you're lonely. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. You definitely, are, some people are very afraid of if I speak my truth now, then I'm going to lose this opportunity. But, you know, if your faith is truly in whatever God has to use for you, then it doesn't matter if you. But to me, that. it's not even an opportunity because it's whatever it is, it's, really it, not. It, it, it's not seeking the real authentic you. No. And it tells God doesn't bless my counterfeit. He blesses me when mm. I'm Lisa, the yes. one he created, the life he intended for me. And so often we get so messed up inside of our heads trying mm. to be all these different things. And he's like, the reason I can't bless you is because I can't find you. It's so true. Pull off your mask, disrobe, and be you now now i believe in a higher self i believe in in creating the best self as possible but still you still got to be authentically you to be well i think i I mean we're we're growing every day but i say that you're only gonna attract the things to you that are benefit you for destiny when Mm -hmm. you are true to you and so that's a that's a good place to start Yeah. yeah that's a good place to start so how do you maintain this great vital spirit that you have? Like, what do you do like in your relationships? Let's just say with your girlfriends or, you know, if you're dating someone right now, like. <laughs> Girl, well, let's see. I'm going to leap over the dating people. <laughs> I'm in a space now where I think we should date a few. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump over that. because You're really dating with people. purpose right now. Yeah, and there and you and you go on several interviews trying to figure out if let, that gig is let, for you. L- let me tell you the truth, because I don't take the first job that's offered to me anymore. I'm not desperate. I'm good. I I'm not desperate. Why. I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate, and um and I have a little bit of savings, so therefore, <laughs> no, I'm good. I don't need to just take the first train, you know, moving. Um, let's see, but but friendships, you know, my my um. So, you know, I have a group, Real Sisters, Real Friends. You've been a part of that as well. Um, and that's near and dear to me. And, you, and uh, I love, I love women. I love the power of a woman. Um, and sometimes I don't think we really realize how powerful we are. And somewhere along the line, uh, we weren't all taught how to um, partner with women, you know, just to be friends and to, to, to be genuine supportive and I'll go even far you know a little further to say as black women and so how I deal with my with my female friends now I used to and my god knows I just had this conversation like yesterday you know I used to be the one that um was always the peacemaker <laughs> oh, and I'm wrong for that right but what I will I'll be honest that kind of shows up as the people pleaser as well and I found that I would tolerate behavior in girlfriendships that I didn't necessarily care to co-sign on. But because I wanted to love them still, I would tolerate it. Now, there's not a lot wrong with that until it really, really, really begins to weigh on you and you begin to be drained and empty from all of this energy that you have allowed in. So now what I'm doing is my girlfriends know I speak my truth. Don't bring me no mess. Don't put me in no mess. Don't bring me no gossip from the other girl. I don't want to hear it. Don't connect with girlfriends of mine that you don't care, that you don't necessarily like, and then involve me in your breakup. I don't want any part of that because this is not the environment that I am trying to foster or cultivate. And so what I've learned now is even in my girlfriendships, with love and kindness, then the first thought when I am delivering to them, don't bring me no mess. (laughs) That is how I'm showing up. And and I'm, and I'm, and I'm so open and honest with my girlfriends. It's never to hurt them, never to hurt them. It is always to just be honest. And I want to be my best self with you. I can't be my best self with you. If I'm laying in, 
you know, and mess with you, talking about everybody else and getting caught up in things that really do not serve a higher purpose. Any purpose. Of life. No. So, so that's really, and, and I've been dealing with that. 2020, you know, I think 2020 taught us that some people we can go without and some people we have to go without, um, whether for, for whatever the reason. And so it allowed me to really connect with my truest self and my truest girlfriends and my truest you know, family ships and I've been holding on to them and and they and I've been telling them I just want to be transparent, honest, and real. And if I need to be broken down today, I need you to respect that because trust me, if you need to have a moment, I'm gonna be there for you. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my girlfriend ships, just being real, real honest and, and sisterly. You know what I mean? So that's it, you know. <laughs> it's great to be able to have yeah. sisters that appreciate your humanity. Yeah. You know, because just because I may appear strong doesn't mean I'm always strong. And Girl. if there's never a safe haven where I can go that I can just let loose, then really you really aren't serving a purpose in either <laughs> we're not serving a purpose in either one of our lives right. because no one is perfect. I say mm -hmm. God didn't have to go to a cross because of perfect people. He went right. to a cross for weak people that are lost. Yes. And yes. so there are areas in my life where I have been lost that mm -hmm. I just needed a good girlfriend that I could cry on their shoulders that didn't leave me in that mess. Yes. I could say what I had to say, but at the yes. end, they say, oh, girl, we got to pray now because you can't That's keep right. going down this path. So, yes. yes, 2020 has showed you that, you mm -hmm. know, what your community represents. Do you really Absolutely. have a foundation in your community? So, yeah, that's a great and vital yeah. point. So we have touched friendships. We have touched children. We have touched yes. men or the lack of men. <laughs> But you know, God right. may be still doing some work because you know, after you pull off some of the layers, you realize that you know, I'm really made not made out of what is needed to have a real, godly, 100% committed relationship. Because you know, some of us walk around with ADHD and we yeah. are <laughs> easily swayed. So you yeah. know, it's a. I tell people all the time, you have to be very careful and you have to be, use wisdom when you're deciding on a relationship because you're saying that I'm going to attach myself with someone that I'm willing to put my life aside in order for them to accomplish whatever it is that mm -hmm. God has given them to accomplish. And I don't know many people that they understand. And the only thing I can kind of compare it to is like when you become a mother for the first time, like yeah. you lay yeah. down everything. It don't matter about your girlfriends, your parents, yeah. even the husband. Like yeah, <laughs> that kid becomes the focal point and you do whatever is necessary because you want that child to thrive as an adult. And sometimes we don't understand that that's the same type of commitment that we need in our relationships. Because even though your child may tell a lie, even though your child may do something wrong, you always have that hope that it's going to get better. But generally in our adult grown up relationships, the minute we see something that we don't like, and we don't even know that God could be using that to make us the best version of us. But we're so quick to say, I can't deal with that. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, if you truly want to have the best, I can't, anybody that's wealthy, they, they just wasn't given to them that had to strive to create wealth. They had resistance, they had opposition, and they made a choice that I am going to be committed to the end result. And I think that in our communities, we have to go back to where our commitment is, is that no matter what, we're going to stick together. Too often, we're pulling each other down. We're not mm -hmm. uplifting each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing wrong Absolutely. with me saying, girl, Queenie, you are one beautiful sister. Mm -hmm. And I sure hope that God bless this is you with a king that can handle all your brightness. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And that's the kind of life that we want the next generation to have. So mm -hmm. it's good that you're laying all these layers off and that I hope that you're doing it in front of your children, you know, because okay. back in the day, we did things behind the scenes and what stayed, which mm -hmm. in the house couldn't go out. I'm very honest with my kids. I said, you didn't turn out the way you did because your mama was so great. It you wasn't tell it. all because of God's grace and mercy. But what I can right. share with you is some of the choices that I made that if I had the wisdom I had now, I would have done it differently. Now, I give them advice. Doesn't mean they're going to take it. Yeah, they got a, they got their own process that they have to go through. But at this stage of the game, I'm at least open to being able to share my flaws more than my triumphs. Because if I didn't have those flaws, I don't think I would have achieved the triumphs. So Absolutely. 
That's I what do. I have learned in relationships. So Queenie, 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 is there anything else you would like to leave with our guests? You know, <gasps> tell them about how they can find you, how they can follow sure. you, some words of inspiration to keep us motivated, you know, <laughs> keeping our lights shining bright. Is there anything you need to say today? Oh my girl? God, there's always so much. I was not prepared to have um, a quote ready, <laughs> but, um, you know, I guess, you know, again, you know, just really doing the soul searching and and not settling for less than what you know you truly deserve. Um, don't put yourself on discount for other people. And, and I do have a quote. One thing that I'm living by is that I refuse to set myself on fire to keep anyone else warm. I know um, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, 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 that's that thing that keeps me, when I feel that I need to torch myself so that you're comfortable, um, I step back and I and I and I really take a look at what's happening right now and is it is it worth it? So I think if anyone is kind of find themselves in a space of um, feeling that way, you know, you just and and I think women, I think we feel. I know men feel it too, so I don't want to make it seem like it's just one and not the other. But I think women, we feel it because we have so much on us at any given time, um, and then we lose we're losing ourselves and we're wondering why what's wrong you know and, and, and does anyone even see us drown you know but we go we have to save ourselves nobody's coming to save us so don't set yourself on fire to keep anybody else warm don't do that um i mean even at, on the plane they tell you to put the mask on <laughs> exactly exactly so, like, i think we need to really start that i know that for sure i am that's what i'm doing in my life and i and i hope others are doing that and and give yourself permission to do so you deserve it that's right you, know? you are loved you are wonderful yes, and you are yes. worth it and until yes. you show up for you you can't have expectations for anybody to show up for you yeah. first. <laughs> and, yes, and don't let nobody make you feel guilty about that. Like if someone says, you know, oh, I'm just never good enough. You know what? If you know that that's not your intent, if you know that that's not anything that you meant for them to feel and that's something they're you designed to use, then that's fine. Let them use it. Don't feel guilty. Just let them go. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. Like, and with that, we're going to say that's okay. a wrap. <laughs> Let me tell you, you can you can you can follow me on Facebook, of course, at the Relationship Zone Podcast. You can follow me on um, IG, the Relationship Zone the Podcast, or TRZ. Um, and I am everywhere as far as like social media, YouTube, and um, my personal pages and Clubhouse. You name it, I'm there. Um, and I try to leave you know a little information here and there to help all of us along our journey. So thank you so much, Lisa, for bringing me and chatting with me today. It's, it's really been wonderful. Thank you, Queenie. I really appreciate you, girl, more than you ever know. So thanks again for joining us at Lessons Learned by Lisa. We look forward to seeing you at our next one. And make sure that you take some time to self-love, because if you're not good for you, you won't be good for anybody else. Love you real hard. Love you.